in this case, I was like, I think this is a, a definition of a demon. Like this person is possessed and is no longer in control of what they would normally do. Witchcraft has taken society by storm. But what if I told you that it's not just tapping into the spiritual world? What if I told you it's something much worse? Most recently, we've seen this exposed with Kat Von D's conversion from witchcraft to Christianity. My husband and I, we look at our, the role decks of friends that we have and the ones that are dictating their life through that. And they're making life decisions through tarot or through, you know, some of the witchcraft stuff. They're also miserable. If it's all about just vibes and games like the Ouija board. What explains this encounter that Kat Von D had with the demonic? The doorbell rang and we had like a security system and my husband looks and it was and it was just this possessed person, you know, who just was like, oh, I just want to know if I could please have those books. Recently, Michael Knowles from the Daily Wire sat down with a young lady named Julie Lopez who practiced witchcraft and then in the process lost her father and all kinds of spooky, crazy stuff happened that has Michael knows completely spooked out during this interview. You say to people who object to all of this because they say, look, yes, primitive societies, they believed in witchcraft, but that was just a way to explain the inexplicable. And now we have science. And mm -hmm. so now with much better precision, we can cure diseases. We don't need to go to a white witch mm -hmm. to cure your cough. You can just take penicillin or something. And so we're, we're demystifying the world and we're not finding demons anywhere. And this is the modern secular humanist perspective that there is no such thing as witchcraft. And the witches or whatever they're doing, they're, they're just mistaken and they're taken to flights of fancy, broomstick or not. And so just take your medicine, you know, read the statistics, live your mechanistic life and uh, ignore all that stuff. I mean, obviously, I'm not scientistic. I don't. I don't think that the material explanations are sufficient. Right. But a lot of people do. It's that's very persuasive because science has done a good job of explaining yeah. many aspects of the physical world. What's your answer to that? Let me tell you a little testimony. My husband, when I mar mar married him, I was. I have always been quite spiritual. Can sense things okay. around. So always since a really young age, even when I became Christian, I was still quite sensitive, see things, feel things. My husband was the opposite of that. Didn't believe in God, he was like that. Mm. He was always would like to see what are the statistics, what is this? So for me, it was quite hard. And he he was close to the idea of like, okay, there is a spiritual realm. There is, uh, there is something I have to be able to see. I have to be able to see the numbers. Like mm -hmm. this is maybe, this is not like that. So I just let him be. And you know what? He had supernatural experiences. Mm. He have here the voice of God. Amanda was completely close to the idea of religion or to spiritual things is Amanda now feels things in the spirit. Why? Because he opened up himself. He decided like, okay, if this is real, I want to, I want to know what, what is happening. And he hear the audible voice of God. He has dreams. He has visions. So this is something that I tell people. The first step for you to open up to this and to realize that, you, you know, that there is a God and there is more than that is to give it a try. Just open up yourself and just, and just, okay, Lord, if you are real, that was what my husband said. If you are real, speak to me. I think it's so fascinating how many people today are willing to dabble with crystals, tarot cards, sp Eastern spiritual practices, and are unwilling to humble themselves and say, God, if you are real, reveal yourself to me. Show yourself to me. I think all of us start in a prayer similar to that. In my case, I kind of went through the side door of apologetics because I was having a crisis of faith and talking to folks from different religions. And, you know, a Christian girl got me going to church and then I was talking to a Jehovah's Witness girl and it was a big smorgasbord of, of ideologies that were overlapping. But I simply said, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. Jesus, if you are who you claim you are, reveal yourself to me. So I just find it so interesting, so telling that people are willing to bank on everything but the God of the Bible. And I wonder why that is. I wonder why there's 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 this tension and there's this hostility towards Yahweh, towards, towards Jesus of Nazareth, right? So I would encourage you, if you're a skeptic watching this, ask God to reveal himself to you. Humble yourself and say, God, if you are who you say you are, reveal yourself to me. Show yourself to me. Please reveal yourself to me, Jesus. And 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 and, and pick up those scriptures and ask him to to to, to let your eyes be open to the word of God, right? And so I, I loved her response here. And because of what I do, I cannot do anything that my husband doesn't agree with. Mm -hmm. So we always have to be in agreement with things, and that's why God has been working on him. Mm -hmm. So what would I say to these people is that open up, just, just give it a try. Give Jesus a try and Come just on. see that all of these things are real, that you are going to start to have dreams. Because I believe with all my heart, all of us are spiritual beings. 
And even if you don't have dreams, even if you don't see things, even if you are this type of person that you are thinking, no, but it has to be a statistic, there has to be number, there's more than that. That's so good. Listen to where the conversation goes. Her dad ends up self-deleting because of a curse placed, and it was a a, a witch, a, a dark magic witch, and a white magic witch that told her this was going to happen, dark magic witch happened. And so Michael Knowles asks her, so what did you guys do with the home that this happened in? Okay. And, and, and there's something that's going to potentially challenge some of you guys here and that, that watch the channel. And, and, and it seems to challenge Michael a bit here. Okay. So listen, listen to her answer here. Did you sell it? I mean, did you? No. you just so this is the home. This is the home that this happened in. Okay, she, by the way, she's from Colombia. And listen to this. So you literally just left? We still have that house. So <laughs> <laughs> my mom, she, um, the only thing that she knew by then was Catholicism. So she just basically, she talked to a priest. The priest went with holy water or something, did some prayers, but then it didn't work. When she came back again, there was the atmosphere. She she, she says that the house was still really heavy, mm. the atmosphere there. And uh, after we became Christians, then she just went over with some pastors, they pray, they anointed the house, they break the course. We still have that house and people live in there and they haven't felt anything. It's interesting she says that her mom initially got Catholic priests to pray for it because that's the only thing they do. And they go into Catholicism a lot here. And Michael knows is a Catholic. And then she says, but it wasn't, that that didn't work. And then it wasn't until she got Christian pastors to go in and perform somebody's prayers on it, that then something was lifted. And now there's people living in it now and they still have the house. She doesn't live there, she's only been once. So I, I found that very interesting. I think the uh, ec- the blessing didn't take. So that's a great question from 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 uh, Michael. Why did the blessing not take? I believe like there are some, some things specifically that you have to break in a house. Hmm. There are certain, for example, this is why understanding the spiritual realm is so important, right? It's not just like, going there and blessing this place. I believe blessing is a powerful thing, mm. but there are certain things in the spiritual realm, like the same thing that we did in the entrance of the house. Yeah. There was a portal there mm. that have to be closed. There is a portal there that the cords have to be broken specifically in that place and play mm. the blood of Jesus and close those things and reveal the evil forces that were inside of that house. Now, we're going to get more into a, a very common way that people open these portals, according to her, that I, w- that I would actually co-sign and agree with, okay? I, I found this interesting, though, for her to respond this way and specifically, why did the priestly blessing not work? But there's a difference between uh, just a basic blessing and say something like a rite of exorcism. You know, in the traditional baptism, there are three exorcisms. There are three, a poor little baby, you know, or an adult who's being baptized, what, three exorcisms. Because there has traditionally been an understanding that there are unclean spirits mm-hmm. that mm. prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. The priest has to cast them out, you know, specifically. And that's different than, you know, a mere passing blessing or something like that. And what you're describing in your home is like a witch putting an actual hex on you or whatever, you know, I mean, that is some pretty heavy duty stuff. Mm. Uh, you know, maybe the difference between a 22 rifle and a bazooka or something like that. And it is like that. This is why, like, as I was saying, I believe we have to understand the spiritual principles, how the spiritual realm works, so we can actually help people. With the things that I learned when I was in that world, I have been able to help so many people now that I am a Christian. Mm. I have done multiple deliverance on people and mm. that come with generational courses and they will go to a place and people will pray for them and nothing happens. You can stop those things. When you understand the spiritual realm, you realize that you now know how to stop the enemy from advancing. So why is the church not engaging into warfare? Because the church doesn't know how to. Why is the church just leaving and allowing the enemy to advance? Because the church doesn't know how the spiritual realm works. Sheesh, man, she's going in. The church doesn't know how the spiritual realm works. And how you can actually stop the enemy from advancing. But now, it, when you say that, is that not similar to to what you might have said in your witchcraft days? When, when you say, I can stop this. You don't, li- do you literally mean you personally can stop Or no, you're saying that... God can stop this yep. and you can be an instrument. You know what is the difference yeah. between that occultism and mm-hmm. where we are now? This is so good. What she says here is so good and so timely and so powerful. Listen to what she says next. The difference is that when I was in the occultism, I had the power. Uh-huh. I could do it the way I wanted. When I wanted, I didn't have to ask any. I would just do it. My spirit guide will help me to do it. In the words of one of our famous poets, poet loderitz of our time, no one man should have all that power. That's Kanye West, by the way. So she said when she was in witchcraft, she it was her power. But listen to what she says, what came after she gave her life to Jesus. Now I am a Christian. I don't do 
anything that's not guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. If it's not guided by the Holy Spirit, I'm not doing it. Come on. So when I say like we have the power to do it through Jesus Christ, yeah. we are the vessels, we are right. the instruments. Right. And this is the same way that the enemy is looking for people that live in sin to advance his kingdom. Uh -huh. It's the same way that God is looking for holy people to advance his kingdom. So if you see, it follows kind of like the same principle. Right. God is looking for holy vessels who are going to, sur to surrender to him, to live in holiness so he can use it to advance his kingdom the same way. Right. God is looking for holy vessels. Now, that word holy is an important one because sometimes we think holy and it's like one of the, it's, it's like a very loaded term. And we think holy means like, I'm just going to be super duper religious and super duper spiritual. But she goes on to explain holiness in a very refreshing way. Holy, in the scriptures, the word holy means set apart. Be holy as I am holy. God is holy. God is set apart. God is different. God is, God is not like us. And we are to be holy the way God is holy. We are to be different from the world. And so she's going in about holiness. But sometimes I think holiness can be a little too abstract for us. That's why the enemy is looking to see, okay, who is living in sin? So I can advance my kingdom through that through that person. Before we get into what holiness means, because I think there's a, a very, very, very practical implication for a lot of us. But before we get there, they start getting into how common are these practices, right? In light of the sound of freedom, which they talk about, how common are these practices? And who are the types of people that are dabbling? And and the answer here is, man, it's 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 pretty spooky. What kind of groups are doing this? Meaning, is it just some weirdo, mm -hmm. fringe, eccentric people on, right. the, on the edges of society who are engaging in this and who get caught up in it? And it's, it's horrible and tragic, but it's some pretty weird out there people. Right. Or is it mainstream people and wealthy people and powerful people? Mm. And I believe there's so many people in power involved in Satanism. I believe there's so many people in power involved in Satanism. Imagine, she even, uh, I mean, I don't want to know, say her name because she, she's quite private, but she told me when she was super involved in that, that there were people of, of, of high rank Sheesh. with a lot of money involved in these rituals. Sheesh, Involved man. in these practices. And um, she didn't give me names, but mm. she said like that she saw a lot of people with money in power, in government, um, involved in these type of practices. <sighs> so I believe that there's a lot of people, there's normal people doing it, and there's also people in power mm. involved in this. Uh, I did hear from someone once. He got involved in all of this kind of stuff, like down to the very worst levels of it. And it, he, he said there there were very, very wealthy, influential, powerful people involved. Like not, you know, not very wealthy, like he, they have nice houses in the suburbs, like Important. like private jet kind mm. of money, you know, mm. in, involved in this. And I, I've heard it, so that was, a, I guess, a direct witness or participant I heard this from, and I've heard it from other people too. On the one hand, it seems like common sense because it's right there in the Bible. Mm -hmm. We, the principalities and the powers and spiritual wickedness in high places right. and the notion that the devil is the prince of this world, right. it's right there. And yet you just, even I still today cannot believe that that is real mm. because mm. I just expect things to be kind of more normal. <laughs> Maybe that is normal. Man, I think, <laughs> I, I, I'm always perplexed by how many Christians don't consider how real the spiritual realm is. It's, it's almost like a, a a functional atheism in that, yeah, like we believe God can answer prayers and and, and we believe there's an enemy, but when we really get into the minutiae, are we really approaching prayer and fasting and becoming more conformed to the image of Jesus as if these things were real? Because this is one thing I'm noticing. I'm noticing that there's a lot of people that come, I came in through the door of apologetics, but there's a lot of people coming in because they know Satan is real. They know demons are real. They know these things were just because they just look around. I'm not talking, I'm not even talking about like in the in the deliverance crowd. I'm talking just people in the world who are doing their thing and go, whoa, there is something spiritual happening. It is spooky. There seems to be a, I know people don't like this word, it's a loaded term, an agenda. There seems to be an ideology. There seems to be a spirit of of the air. That's the door they're coming through. And I find it equally as interesting where Christians just aren't willing to engage and they, 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 we got the doctrine, we got the Bible, we love the Bible, but it's like, it ain't Father, Son, Holy Bible, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have a spirit that lives within us. We have a spirit that gives us power. I know, I know, I know this is like getting kind of, you know, but it's real, man. Are we, are we, are we aware of what's happening in the spiritual realm? Are we, do, do, do we engage with it? Do we care about it? Right? That's why we have to prepare ourselves. I believe there has to be a spiritual preparation. And with that, I mean, holiness making sure that you are like living the holy life, that you fast, that you pray, that Come you on. intercede, you're connected with the Holy Spirit, that you are closing portals in your life, that you, if you have sins in your life, you stop them. If you have courses, you're breaking generational courses and Come iniquities, on. as the Bible says, Come that on. you have this, 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 this training and that you are trained as a soldier. I always see... That you 
are trained as a soldier. She's going to go more and more deep, and it's, go and, and it's going to poke, going to poke some of you, okay? I'm just w fair warning. I always see everything for me, everything that happens in the natural is a representation of how what is happening in the spiritual realm. So part of what I see here with the armies, right, how they get trained, how they get equipped, they don't go to attack the enemy, they first investigate who is the enemy, who is the head, what is the weakest point, how we can enter the same way should be for us. No, we actually need to have understanding who is the person and the principality that we are facing, who is the spirit of high rank, and the same thing, fasting, prayer, clo clo close importance, breaking courses, and train also in war, waking up early to pray like this. These people train, they wake up early, they train, they eat healthy. The natural impacts the spiritual. Sometimes we just want to make everything super spiritual, but she's saying the natural, did you guys catch it? She's saying the natural impacts the spiritual. And then she goes on to say, praying, fasting, breaking portals. But but listen to what she starts zeroing in on. Listen very closely. Early to pray like this. this. Waking up early to pray. But I'm a night owl. Waking up early to pray. These people train. They wake up early. They train. They eat healthy. They eat healthy. See, this this is this is why I I, I really appreciate this sister because you because you notice she's um, she's speaking on the natural as well as the supernatural spiritual warfare in the natural because the natural can impact the spiritual. She said waking up early to pray, eating healthy. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody besides us on this channel connect. The practicalities of eating healthy, waking up early, and dealing and disciplining your body and your life in the natural. Same way for us. We don't realize, but even eating, yeah. certain things affect the spiritual realm. <sighs> certain things affect the spiritual realm. Man, all the backdoor dealings between the government subsidizing corn, fruct high fructose corn syrup, and sugar being and everything. You don't think that affects your, your mood? You don't think that affects your emotional state? You don't think you staying up until one in the morning affects your, your mental state? You don't think your, your willpower doesn't get depleted as the day goes on? The food you're eating, how late you're staying up, the type of things you're consuming, the things you're doing in the natural are going to impact your spiritual. I, I, I so greatly appreciate this young lady for leaning into practical things that could be happening to you and to me when we don't, when we're not on our P's and Q's in terms of discipline. We're not saved by the discipline. We're not saved by the sanctification. We're saved by grace through faith by the by 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 the blood of Jesus. Amen. To good works. To becoming more sanctified. To being holy. Holy, set apart, meaning you don't look like the world. We just want to be not like the world by avoiding, oh, I don't listen to secular music anymore. I don't watch secular shows anymore. How is the rest of your 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 consumption? How how would how is the how are you disciplining your body? How are, what are you putting in your mouth? Pause. What are you watching? What are you eating? What are you what, are you moving? We see a lot in there about fasting. When's the last time you fasted? When's the last time you fasted from anything? So I I, I ideally appreciate this young lady leaning in to the practical side of these things because I don't I don't think we talk about these things and then we wonder why so many in the church today are dealing with deaths of despair, mental illness. Right, like why Why are these things so prevalent and, and why do they seem to take such a stronghold? So we are eating or we eat this fast food and pizza, all of that, I'm, I'm telling you, all of those things are fed. She said it, don't get mad at me, she said it. Because when I talk about it, you guys get in your feelings. She said it. The spiritual realm, because you might go to sleep and in the spiritual realm, now you might have nightmares. Now you cannot perceive maybe the Holy Spirit is trying to give you a dream or something. So all of those things for me are like important that we actually understand and we actually trained yeah. as the people in the military here, here on earth so we can actually be part of God's army and part of the occupying army so we can understand, okay, how are we going to occupy nations? It's not actually going against the person because Ephesians 6, 12 says our fight is not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against the Come powers. On. So understanding that we love the person but we come against the spirit that's coming right. behind. And this is what we have to be pre prepared for. This is what we have to be ready for if we want to see actually a change in our nation and establish the government of Jesus Christ in that nation. Man, oh man. Man, oh man. Now again, being sanctified and being conformed to the image is not something that 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 is uh, you are taking pride in your works. That's that's not what we're saying. We're saying, hey, if you want to operate in areas where you have breakthrough in that there's no strongholds in your life as well as being able to operate and do things that are beyond just the carnal fleshly, you're going to have to discipline yourself. 
the root word in disciple is the same root word as in discipline. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.